Alright guys, so welcome back to another session. Um, I think where we last left off was learning about the the dynamics or the physics. Like applying physics to our game. So I press play. The ball should drop and it should react towards this um, other collision or other I will out it wait is the is the the panel a rigid body? No, it doesn't have a rigid body. It only has a collider. So yeah. Because I guess Well, I guess I'm still like progressing through the tutorial, so maybe we'll get to it. But do we even apply a rigid body to the the paddle? Alright, anyways, I'm gonna just continue where we last left off. So so far we are done with um, we are done with about five hours of the Udemy course out of sixty four I think. So yeah we're still have a long way ahead of us but I think it'll be fine. So let's see where did we last left off. Oh yeah, so we were just adding the bounce to the physics material, which is right here, in which we're messing around with the bounciness of an object that we we want to add this physics material to, so in our case, the ball. And you can only apply it to rigid bodies, I think. So they say that from the um, the 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 document that the the bounce should like the regular value should just be one. kind of rolling though. Oh, there it is. Oh, we're supposed to add it in the collider. That's odd. I wonder how that's going to work. Oh, it's the same thing. So I guess we're supposed to do it in the collider, not here. Let's probably put this in the one.
So actually what I might do is uh Actually no never mind. Colliders, collisions, and triggers. So for this uh, new video, we're going to create some sort of collision detection. So when the, the ball exits from the screen, we'll have some sort of collision here. So And if it is triggered, as in like the ball makes contact with the with the col the collider or collision right? the col the object with um, then it it will trigger the game over event So he throws the z-axis rotation to prevent it from rotating in that axis. So I think was it this one? To prevent it from rotating, isn't this in the y-axis though? Let me go check. I'm gonna have to check. Still rotating. Oh, all right. Oh, this is freeze rotation versus freeze position. Wait, I wonder what this. I think it's just gonna stay here. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that that kind of makes it static, I guess. Z just prevents the rotation. I ah, got it.
so when we uh, check mark this is trigger uh, property um, it makes it so that the any object that also has a collider like this will pass through it rather than uh, reacting to it so is trigger colli uh, collision are for events where we're not technically making the objects react to each like in terms of like the physics or the um, the physical in the physical realm rather it's just a way for us to know if um, this object is touches another object and what what do we want to do when that happens So if I took it off, it would it would bounce right here? Or wait, hold up. If I move it, it's just gonna bounce. Yeah, right, right where the collision's at. But when I have the ish trigger in, um, property, then it's gonna pass through it. This is the site that they're showing. Um, this is colliders over here. Collection. Thing is over here. So when two objects collide, a number of different script events can occur depending on the configurations of the colliding objects' rigid bodies. The charts below give details of which event functions are called based on the components that are attached to the objects. Some of the combinations only cause one of the two objects to be affected by the collision. Some of the combinations only cause of some of the combinations only cause one of the two objects to be affected by the collision, but the general rule is that the physics will not be applied to an object that doesn't have a rigid component. But in general rule is that physics will not be applied to an object that doesn't have a rigid body component attached. Hmm. So an object can have a collider. But they don't have to be. They don't entirely have to be a rigid body. Uh, we only apply a rigid body to things you wanna. Uh, we want a physics to affect, or physics to affect. So what this table is saying is that um, wherever there's a Y, it means that there's a collision detection. In which, you know, it's not a non-trigger event. So a rigid body collider can match with a static collider, another rigid body collider, and a kinematic but when it involves trigger colliders, they're just going to pass through it. Static collider can react with a rigid body collider. A kinematic can also react to a rigid body collider. And then here, it's basically um, what I think is all the possible ways to create uh, 
uh, objects to be trigger trigger events. So in a case where, so I guess a static collider cannot be, trigger another static collider, but a static collider can trigger uh, a rigid body trigger collider. I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's like they only trigger when it, it's activated, right? But I guess uh, over time, I'll try to see how that works. Was that? They actually have a better, they actually merge the things together, so this is a lot better. I'm gonna try to save this, this one. We gotta create a script for our loose collider. I'm gonna call it loose collider script. Yes. There you go. Create an add. Bada boom. And create a edit script. I load up the Visual Studio. Or I'll see the default C sharp script. I'm not going to use this. Alright. So I guess a good question for me to ask would be when would we know not to use the start and update? I know start is kind of used like a way for it's like a constructor, right? So whenever the script is ran, it would automatically set these variables in the beginning when the script is loaded. And then update just like as the game's progressing will keep will continuously be called throughout the, the rest of the game. So I guess when we're considering um, just creating like since we just wanted to um, I lost my train of thought.
So this method is used to um, perform an action if an object passes through uh, whoever has this script as their part part of their uh, property, which in our case would be the loose collider. So we need to figure out what we want to do when the trigger has been activated. So we're gonna for for this part, we're gonna set um, when the, the the ball collides with this loose collider, it's gonna load up load the the game over scene. Alright, so we're given a challenge. So when the ball enters our loose collider trigger volume, uh, or yeah, load the game over scene. So I will need to use the scene management namespace, which we did with our other script. Let me just load it up. So scene management. Well, I guess I, I can see why. We need to, first of all, get the, the scene that we want. Well, Maybe not um, entirely this one, but we can use this scene manager load scene, and then maybe like the string that they're talking about would be the name of the scene, because we do have the scenes. Uh, we have the name for each scene. We have game over, level one, and start menu. So they want us to go through the document to see if there's a possible method that within the scene management uh, namespace that we can use to do so. so let's go to scene manager yeah that was that was pretty loud <laughs> but uh, let's see yeah get scene at which is an index get seen by oh here it is get seen by name searches through the scenes loaded uh, for a scene with a given name so I have a feeling it's this one let's click on it so public static scene management dot scene get seen by name and then we enter a string scene is a reference to the scene what if valid if valid if not an invalid scene is returned searches through the scenes loaded for a scene with the, with the given name the name has to be without the unity extension the name can be the last part of the name as displayed in the build settings window so I guess like when we go to build settings um, like I guess if your name's really big and it kind of shortens it for you then you can use that you can also pass in that name so that they at least know what you're talking about in which case the first scene that matches will be returned oh yeah that's also true too so if you have multiple scenes of the same name because like let's say they're, they're part of a specific category um, it'll just and then if it gets cut off in the build settings you'll probably just return the first one that's similar to it or exactly the same as it the name can also be path as displayed in the build settings still without the unity extension in which case only the exact match will be returned this is case sensitive and I feel like the name would be a lot better than the path considering 
like the path always changes especially if you're gonna make like if you're gonna make this like more dynamic but I guess I don't know if there's like how they use it but I really see that just the name being more uh, useful especially if you just I mean for testing purposes I think you know putting the path might be good but for like in the future I think that having the name would be a lot better be just because like it's more dynamic in the sense that when you launch the app you're not it's the the path seems static that's why it's like it's, it has to be declared and you really can't change it I don't think unless I'm missing something but oh we got a compiler here um, probably because I didn't finish writing or I did wait a minute what, what is this what is this uh, low collider a column a uh, commas expected what what is it talking about Am I supposed to write something here? Is it is it waiting for me to to write down something? Huh. All right. Well, yeah. Um, so he want. So first of all, let's uh, use the namespace of Unity Engine dot Scene Management. Alright, now we got that. Um, so you want to create a function, let's say called private void uh, load scene or something. And it takes a string, string scene name, and we'll do it like scene manager dot um, scene loader or load scene dot load scene scene name Oops. load scene and scene name and then in our on trigger we'll just say uh, well this is kind of bad how about load scene I don't know if that's going to cause errors uh, we'll, we'll try it out so we'll do if the, if the ball collides with the lose collider then load the game over screen so in this case this trigger a method will activate if the ball does collide so maybe not the if the ball collides with the loser and load the game over screen so load scene uh, game over let's see if that works we do have some we still have some errors I wonder why Hmm. It says syntax error comma expected. I don't know what that means. Do I need to restart it? I wonder. I'll comply. Oh, my bad. Identifier expected. Oh, my bad. I didn't see that. <laughs> now it should work. All right, cool. So we're just gonna try this out, and I'm, I'm gonna end it for today. So um, no, I want this. So let's see. Nice. So let's. Just move this here. Just move the pedal.
game over. Play again? Sure, start game. Oh no! <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna end it here for today and yeah. Catch you later. Peace.